everyone, and welcome! Today is lesson one, and we're kicking this off by painting some realistic creature eyes. These are perfect for electronics projects, animatronics, maybe you're making a puppet or a very cool mask. We are going to start with these widely available, they're called glass cabochons or cabochons. I'll pronounce it all kinds of different ways so I can uh, equally offend everybody. We got kind of like a dragony type eye here. I guess this is like a, a frog eye or something. Yeah, I'll call it a frog eye. This can be maybe a, a reptile eye or an eagle eye, some kind of bird. Painting the pupil, which is where we're going to start, is the toughest part. If you can get over that hump, you're good. You're like sailing. We've all watched Bob Ross, right? And if you haven't, come on. If you want to start an artistic journey, that's like a staple. You've got to watch us some Bob Ross. He starts with the background, the sky and the landscaping. Then he actually starts to paint the elements on top of that, the trees. Then what's in front of the trees? The house. So the image is painted coming out at your face. We're actually going to do it backwards. So we're going to take Bob Ross's canvas and flip it the other way around. And in essence, we're going to start with everything in the foreground and then work our way back to the background because we're not going to be painting on top of the dome portion. We're going to be painting on the back of the eye. We're going to start with the pupil. Like, let's just like rip the bandaid off and get this over with, because that is just absolutely the most horrible part. You definitely want to start with a smaller pupil than you anticipate, because it will get bigger. <laughs> it will just accidentally get bigger, trust me. And dare I say, shaky hands are actually good for these eyes. It gives you much more realistic effects when you kind of add a shake in there. You know, the pupil, you need slightly steadier hands. So, so we're, we're not ready to shake. We're not ready to shake yet. If you feel like you don't have control over your hands is to plant them down, plant them down and just drag. So the more your hands are planted down, the easier it is to control the brush. See, look, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already nervous. If you totally screw up your pupil, my suggestion to you is to keep going. Sometimes my best pupils are like completely messed up. You see how skinny that is and how fat that is? We'll figure something out. We'll figure it out. So before you go any further, let's do some drying. That's a little blow dry song, a blow dry song. Don't worry about having such sharp lines. If you really look at eyes, they're not all that sharp and having some curvature is actually, I think, more natural looking. That's kind of looking okay. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to keep going. And I think I'm going to make that side a little bit different. And I am just going to sharpen up this end. And the more you play with it, be careful. You'll be sorry. <laughs> right? I'm going to whip out another one and let's do like another style pupil. This is going to be maybe like an, an alien pupil. Looks kind of like a... A chess piece, you know, like a pawn. <laughs> it looks like a pawn eye. <laughs> Hopefully it'll look kind of cool. I'm thinking something like this might be kind of neat. In order to start this, remember, we're painting backwards. So the colors that look like they're more in the front are the lighter colors. So we're going to start with the lighter colors and then move our way down to the darker colors. But before we do that, you'll notice that the eye Right around your iris is a layer called the limbus. And if you look real closely in the mirror, the limbus is oftentimes a little bit of this darker halo that goes around the eye. Now imagine if we paint all the colors by the time we go paint the limbus, well, there's no more transparency. There's limited real estate. You can see how much of real estate the pupil has already taken up. Whatever color you put on top of this pupil is not going to show through on the other side. So start keeping that in mind as you paint like this one you can see it's got a lot more yellow than it does red because I went too crazy with the yellow and then I didn't have much space left over for the red. So let's get our limbus out out of the way first. All I'm going to do is go around the eye. Ooh, that's, that's a bit much. That's a bit much. Just around the eye. And this is where shaky hand comes in. And remember, we're starting to get a more 
translucent. It's not as dark as the pupil. It's a, just a little bit of a translucent layer. Now, normally, if you have an airbrush, this is better done with an airbrush because you get kind of that fog around the eye. But because we're doing this beginner level, most uh, of you are not going to have an, an airbrush lying around. We're trying to mimic a lot of the, the effects. And you can see that I'm uh, using shaky hand technique. If you need a little help, grab yourself a cup of coffee for your shaky hand technique. Oh, ooh, I just blotched that a bit much. So if that happens, because we're painting on glass, see, just wipe the paint off and it'll actually help pick some of that paint off. Now, obviously, if this eye were bigger, then we would get into the whites of the eye, but that's an option too. You can paint a much smaller pupil and a, you know, a smaller iris and make the rest of the eye white. But this being one inch, that would make us, you know, have to paint really, really tiny. And that's, uh, that's a little bit tougher to get all the details when it's so small. So now that I have like not too much paint going on, I'm just going to start to really bring it a little bit further in. Not too much. Not too much. Don't go crazy. And then when we turn this around, we're starting to get kind of that darkness around the eye, but still plenty of transparency for us to paint over. You can see that the red almost looks like it goes all the way to the edge. And now we're gonna dry brush just a little bit, just to kind of like feather this in. And all I'm doing is touching the edge, just to kind of fill it in. And because it's got almost no paint, I'm creating that gradient effect by just painting over. Kind of shadowing and it's barely visible like if you don't see anything then you're probably doing it right now i'm going to do the same with this guy over here i'm going to nail out some two eyes here i'm just going to like dot the outside of this as the brush is losing paint i'm beginning to take it inside a little bit more that's a little bit of a different limbus now let's take our other brush and kind of fade all I'm going to do is dip into more black paint and just kind of shade the outside a little bit. And then I'm just going to stab like the movie Psycho. We're just going to stab, stab, stab. All right, so we got two kind of neat looking eyes. I'm going to put them where you guys can actually see them. What I want to try and create is almost like an outline of the pupil in the silver in certain areas. So what I'm going to do is start with the silver on the pupil. Because remember, whatever we put on the pupil is not going to show through on the other side. And then just kind of push it out where I want it to peep, peep through. So we're not going to go nuts. And I'm gonna take some of these big ones and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start this in the middle and just shove it out ever so slightly. Remembering that no matter where you paint on the black, it's not going to be visible. So we can be really, really messy with this. It's not really gonna affect anything. It's literally just outlining. And you can try and outline it, go for it. I find it easier to start in the black and shove it out there <laughs> or else you may end up with some very thick lines. And I think that bottom line here needs some, some silver. So let's hit that up. And I've been maintaining the silver to one side of the eye. I think that might be interesting. So now it's got a little bit of silver interest. And it might be interesting to add some silver around this halo. See how for the frog eye, we have a see-through shimmer effect. You can still see the green on the other side coming through that gold. Metallic paints by nature are more watery, like less pigmented, so you can get away with that. But I'm going to be adding water to really water it down to create that nail polish shimmer that we're going to like fake on this thing. So first, I'm going to blow dry and get our silver set, because once you start adding water to this, the colors are going to want to shift around a little bit. And then the other one will do some Sith eyes, even though it's a pawn. Although if you're a Sith, you are a pawn in the game. Maybe, maybe that's why you have pawn shaped pupils. I'm going to get some of this on this cubby hole here, maybe put it here. And then I'm just going to start dipping the brush and then dipping it in, in the paint until it's a consistency that I like. I'm going to count the dips because everyone asks, well, what's the consistency? I don't know. You know what, what looks and feels good to you. So let's count the drops. So I did one, 
Now, this is the second dipping. It still offends me. Let's go for the third dipping. Let me show you after perhaps seven dippings what it looks like. All I'm gonna do is go into this kind of watery mess that I have here, and I'm gonna rub it off on my towel here. And then I am just gonna stab. Now when you do this, it'll look like nothing is happening. It's like, that is super lame. You almost have to hold it at an angle to see that paint is actually getting on there or something's getting on there. And I'm just going to stab it one time on the paper towel because I'm gonna go heavier. Oh, I'm gonna go heavier. This is where the regrets start happening. It's kind of see-through uh, on this side right here. So I'm gonna continue just a little bit. You don't wanna like uh, overdo it. Oh, it's looking pretty good there. I barely have anything in my paintbrush. So hopefully this won't be so bad. I overdid it on the black a little bit, but it might end up looking kind of cool. On this side, we have just a little bit of a ring of shimmer. And then on this side over here, the shimmer comes more inside to the eye. And it's see-through enough because you can see the, the box, you know, through this area here. So maybe we'll create a bigger green halo and maybe put in some green striations and then do dark blue. Pump this one up a notch. This one's kind of like subtle. Let's get kind of a cool green. You know, I have this light olive green. You can mix some yellow with a darker green if you want. Now remember, if you mix yellow and white, you get more of a pastel color. Same thing with the green. If you have a dark green and you mix it with white, you get a little bit more of a pastel. So let's see how this without any mixing is gonna turn out. And this is called a light olive green. And I'm gonna go back to the tiniest brush I have, which is the double zero. And all I'm doing is dipping and then, you know, just kind of wiping a little bit of excess off, not, not a ton. We're not gonna go all the way down to the edge. It's like nothing's going on. Like, why, why are you even painting? But if you look, you might catch a little bit of the green. And it looks like you're not even painting anything. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier. It's always best to start off light and then be able to switch. Because now you can see it starts to get a little bit tougher to rub off. But if you have a scraping tool and you want to get a tiny detail off, you'll be able to do it. You can start seeing some of the yellow there. And maybe here, towards the bottom of the eye, maybe I will take it all the way because maybe maybe it'll be a little bit like greener here. You can see the striations beginning to take effect, all using shaky hand technique. The middle of the eye is now turning a little bit green and I have not taken the green out to this area or that back area there. I think I'm gonna reserve those more for the blues. But I am taking it a little bit further out here I'm gonna go from light to dark, and sometimes I'll go back to the light as we start seeing what the transparency situation is within our eye. The blues that I have are cobalt. I have hello blue, which is a Bob Ross favorite right here. And I have this ultramarine blue, which is probably the, almost like a purple. So I'm gonna reserve this one for last to put around the outer circle of the eyes. This is too dark, I need a lighter blue. So let's mix a little bit of this and white together. I'm doing like a, I don't know, 50-50 mix. That's kind of what it looks like to me. So let's start with a 50-50 mix and see what this looks like. I'm curious to see what would happen if we added a hair of like this really, really bright yellow, because this is looking a little pastel-y, like Easter egg. So I'm gonna just, I don't even know what that is, but that is like a tiny, tiny dab. That gives us kind of like a, I wouldn't say cyan, but a turquoise, and that might look kind of neat. I'm gonna start at the center of the eye, because remember, anything at the center of the eye is not gonna be visible. Right there, you can see a tiny blue line, and you know it's not really affecting what's going on with the eye. So the back of the eye looks somewhat disastrous, but, See, so these I think I'm gonna start bringing out to the very edge. And some of the striations you can barely see. And that's kind of the point. You want different varying, uh, I guess, opacities of your striations. And so if there's a really opaque one there, 
you know, maybe you want to put another opaque one there. You don't want it like all the opaques on one side and then not on the other. This is the part that takes the longest for the eyes is just kind of working this opacity. And you want to drag, you know, really lightly. You want as thin lines as possible. And then some I'm just going to kind of concentrate and maybe not go all the way. So that's looking kind of neat. Let's see if it looks different on our box here. Oh yeah, so you can really start seeing some of these striations in blue, some more opaque than others. I might add just a few, you know, because we're running out of real estate where you see brown box is all we have left to paint. Let's add only a few more. We can always come back and, and add more if we're unhappy with what we've done. I think I'm gonna stop there because the eye is gonna suffer from this one where it's too light. And see, I ran out of real estate for the red. So let's jump already into the next color. So I'm gonna use the same number triple zero and let's, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's go for cobalt blue. This one I'm definitely taking to the edge. Remembering that any blue that kind of appears here is not even visible, you know, on the outside. I mean, whoop. And you can see the blue is only beginning to appear you know, towards that translucent area. But I like to kind of start where it's not visible for me to get my shake down. It's, it's like an opportunity to get your shake down before you kind of move on. Oh, oh, oh. That's why it's good to start where you can't see. And I keep going until I can't see paint coming out of the brush anymore. So that way you get different, different striations or different levels of opacity with your striation. It's still pretty translucent. We still see a decent amount of white paper towel coming through. So we have some room to keep going. And I'm still getting a lot of nice areas of translucency that we can now add a much darker color to pretty soon here. So what dark color can we go with? Ooh, ultramarine blue, because this one is almost, I mean, it's almost kind of purple and you can see the price of this. So you know how old this paint is. You can't buy <laughs> this paint for this price anymore, the $3.99. So this is probably 15 years old. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. All right, so for this, I'm gonna go opposite. I'm gonna go from the base to the center. Because it allows me to kind of like attack some of these transparent areas right here. So that's looking pretty, pretty good right there. And you're getting some, some shimmeries, some shimmer effect. And you can see the dark halo we've created on the outside of our eye to represent the limbus here. And the, the camera is really picking up on this green and it makes the green completely not blended, <laughs> but it's a bit more blended to the naked eye. I guess if I, you can see the, the shimmer going on in that area there. And then if I flip it here, you can see that the shimmer is only along the outer edge here. So it gives your eye a little bit more depth. But even as I turn this, you can see the eye, the pupil, some of that silver outline of the pupil to kind of like make it stand out. What if we add like silver? Well, let's try that. Let's see what happens. It might look good. It might look horrible. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to roll the dice. Since I have some silver left over, we do have a decent amount of transparency, especially in here. So what if we add a little bit of silver? Then I like this to really fully dry before I add the Mod Podge layer over top of it. And that'll just kind of like protect the rest of the eye. Now I'm not going to take this all the way out. Let's see. Oh yeah, so it did fill in the rest and give us more of a shimmer. And I think it blended everything. The tendency for people is to put the final layer as a very dark color, but sometimes that'll darken your eye and just make it look less bright. Sometimes it's best to go, well, I went with a silver because we were kind of like had little hints of silver. Sometimes it's best to go with white because then it just kind of makes all the other colors pop. But you can see it instantly brightened up the eye. And so if you compare it to this eye, this eye now, they were both the same darkness pretty much, but this one now turned out a lot darker. 
I'm gonna put this eye aside, upside down, let it dry here. And let's bring in our pawn, our Sith pawn, and figure out what the heck we wanna do with our Sith pawn. I have this bronze, this metallic bronze. So you can always take some brown and mix some gold into your brown and you can get something a little bit more bronzy here. I really like that outline. So I'm gonna shove this bronze around the pupil. And then I got some, some spots here that I might spot some of the bronze. Maybe I'll use number zero, yeah. All right, number zero, let's go. And I'm gonna start on the black and just kind of like shove my way just to create a tiny little halo. And you'll see that the this metallic seems like really, you can already see a little bit of that halo going on. And you don't want the outline to be too, too fat. Or you do, you know, there's no wrong or right. So we're getting a little bit of an interesting uh, situation there. And I think I'm gonna start, make the eye really light on the interior and then move to a darker, maybe even end up kind of orange uh, on the side. That'll be kind of interesting. Might look kind of funky. Funky. And I'm just kind of going over some of the previous black spots with a little bit of this bronze. I'm not 100% that I'm loving the bronze, but I'm kind of curious to experiment with it. So I'm gonna keep going with it. I went a little bit heavier with the bronze to hope that it'll pop a little more, but we'll see. This one, instead of striations, let's use like little dots. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to wet our paint a little bit. I'm using a number two. I'm just gonna go for it. A number two and wipe, you know, all the excess. And let's see, maybe maybe we'll bronze kind of like the, the outer edge. And I'm just doing little, I'm just poking it because we've watered the paint down. It's very translucent. And you want to be careful going nuts on top of your black because it'll start lifting the black off. Let's start with a really bright, let me see what kind of yellows I got going on. I got this one. Pay no attention to the price. It just kind of says how old this paint is. And I have this yellow oxide. And then I have maybe something like a raw sienna. And then finally, maybe we can mix in an orange. I'm thinking we can do something with these four colors right here. Let's start with this yellow. I'm gonna see if I could do stuff without mixing any colors. The no mixing colors challenge. We're not gonna do striations and thank goodness because this yellow is chunked. It is chunkedified, this yellow. I'm starting with this little brush around the pupil and then we'll move on to a much like a much uh, bigger brush as we move our way out for our Sith eye. And I'm just kind of going for it and we'll see how this ends up looking. It'll be kind of like a cool experiment. I'm just dotting around a whole bunch of yellow right around the pupil. I'm not going out here only because I want that to be more, I want that to be darker. So you can kind of see what's happening. See, I'm adding just like yellow dots and I'm concentrating them towards the center where our weird pawn slash bell phone situation of a pupil is going on. Eventually what I'm gonna do is switch to a little bit of gold in the same area. So we have the bronze, but the gold is a little bit more bright. And I think that'll be kind of neat, a mix of gold and bronze to kind of fill in that uh, translucency. You know, now again, you can use this dot method and not fill in the translucency and put a light back there. And that might look pretty cool. But I'm gonna go for gold now. We're gonna go for gold, people. And I'm gonna start really near the pupil and then kind of dab dab a -roo. And I'm not like, drying in between these steps because I think it's interesting to let the colors just kind of meld together. So that's kind of like how the eye is looking so far. So let's add another, another darkness. I would say this guy right here, yellow oxide. 
And this kind of gives you a little bit of a different look than striations because you don't want to make all your eyes just like striations and striations. So you can see we're beginning to move to the darker color towards the edge. So we want to be careful not to go nuts on the edge with this. I'm just going to do, you know, kind of a couple dots along the edge as we transition into something darker, like maybe the raw sienna will be a good transition. But you can see the shimmer of the gold, which is kind of neat. And it bumps up against that, that darker bronze. I don't know, maybe going gold against the black would have been better. If I may so self-critique. And now that I'm kind of running out of paint, I'm going to kind of go a little bit closer to the edge just to kind of create like a blend, you know, because you don't want like very noticeable circles going from one color to the other. You kind of want to get a decent you know, a decent little gradient. So now I'm going to move on to maybe like a raw sienna like this. This might be kind of a nice, yeah. This is a lighter eye, so we're not gonna go so dark around the edges. This type of eye we started with because it is kind of the easiest to learn on. They're also super cheap and really easy to get the paint off if you decide you really just don't wanna keep. And you don't even wanna keep your mistake. You just wanna like completely erase all evidence of what you did. Now you can see how dark, you know, that, that edge is, and it's beginning to hide some of this tiger, you know, this leopard print situation going on here. The blobby technique, just the dots give you a different kind of texture than we have with the striations here. So all, all kind of different ways of, of doing it and giving your eyeball different effects. depending on the creature you want. And one of the advantages of these like glass tiles, A, cheap and easy to learn on, B, really lightweight for electronics, and you can tuck them in anywhere pretty much. The disadvantage is that if you, you know, want your eye to turn like this, you kind of run out of room. So they can have a little bit of movement, you know, and because they are domed, you do get kind of the depth of eyes, which are kind of neat. I'm just beginning to try and see where there is maybe some transparency along the edges here that need filling out. So you can see how much darker the outside of the eye got just by uh, you know adding that dark color. And now we don't really see as much the whole like leopard print situation that was going on. And so all I'm gonna do is, normally I like to do a lighter color, but because you can see it's so light here, you know that perhaps I'd like to you know, darken it just a little bit. So I'm going to do that by adding some of this burnt umber. So normally I would go white here just to really lighten the eye, but I think I want to make it a little bit darker on the other side. All right, so let's see how that looks. All right, much better, I think. Much better. So that's a different color eye, and I wouldn't put the eye like that. If I were to mount the eye, I would mount it like that, you know, so it doesn't look like an obvious pawn <laughs> in, in a game of chess. So you can see how, you know, how different this eye looks just, you know, by poking the brush than, say, something like this looks where we were creating more of the striations. By putting the silver, which is kind of like a white, behind it, it really lightened the eye as comparison to something like this that is slightly darker, slightly darker, though the way I'm holding it at the light, it does appear a little bit lighter, but it is not, uh, take my word for it. So you can see some of the silver dots that I have on this one that I'm twisting towards the outer edge there. It's just enough to kind of give it a 3D effect. This one uses more similar techniques to this one here in my left hand and that we were kind of dotting on the paint, but I also combined a little bit of striation. So you can kind of like combine, mix and match. You know, I'm not super happy with this pupil, but I'm gonna keep this as a memento to remind me not to, not to do that or to practice it. You know, I think that this had potential. Doesn't look bad though, I'm pretty proud of it. And then of course we have our more reptilian kind of dragon eye. Depending on how crazy you go with the painting, you can get more light shining through. So you can go translucent and put an LED. 
So we have all kinds of different like eyeballs going on. And of course, one of each. So these are for Cyclops projects. If you've got an, an electronics or animatronics Cyclops project, I have a variety of different eyes for you. Let the paint really cure and then hit it up with a layer or two, two coats of your Mod Podge. Now don't do the, the top of the eye because then you'll get brush strokes. Just do the bottom. And the purpose there is in case like your eye falls, you don't want like a scratch going across the back of like where you did your nice paint job. The top of the eye, if it gets scratched, you can always polish it off. It's glass, so much easier than acrylic where you have to get really fine with the polishing or you see the, the scratch marks. I think this was really, really cool. And again, really easy, great for small electronics projects, doesn't take up a lot of real estate in whatever it is you're building. We are combining art and we are combining engineering, putting them together to build like artistic engineering projects. Oh yeah. All right, guys, have a great night and I'll catch you later. Get Bob Rossi with yourselves.